What is going on guys? My name is Savatmo and I am a serial procrastinator. In this game dev experiment, we're going to go over the process of building Wordle in 3D using 3JS. So in case you're not familiar, Wordle is a game where you have to guess the correct word for the day. Each word you can guess is about five letters. Let's just say that I guess reads. And once you guess something, it's going to give you some information about what letters are correct and which, which ones are incorrect. So if a letter is turned yellow, that means that the letter exists in today's word. If it turns green, that means it exists in today's word and it is in the correct position. So basically, you just keep guessing until you get the correct word. And when you do, everything is going to be green like this. Wordle got so popular recently that Google even made an Easter egg when you search for the word Wordle. And this is basically what we're going to be building today, except the small twist is that it's going to be in three dimensions. Cool. Let's get started. What I like to do is start off with a simple little starter template for my 3JS projects. So I created this template under my game Dex repository. All you got to do is go in and npm install it. And basically what this template does is it initializes a 3JS scene to your canvas inside of a React Vite app. And once you do that, you also construct a simple box geometry and add it to the scene. And this is sort of the starter template that I always like to use just because setting all those up can take 10, 15 minutes. So I just created this template and this is going to be our starter code. Now let's actually dive into how we're going to build a 3D Wordle clone. The first thing we're going to want to do is to create a Wordle class and this Wordle constructor is going to contain everything inside of the game. And the first thing we want to do is create those three dimensional boxes that we talked about in the beginning. It was a five by five grid. So what I'm doing is creating the board. So this is the X offset on the left here. And this is the Y offset. Each row is going to have five blocks. So and this is the first row because when you go Y positive 40, that means that that is the top row. When you go Y positive 30 is, you know, the second row. So that's what I'm doing here. And the main thing to know about these blocks is that they are using the rounded box geometry. They're going to be eight by eight. And of course, I want to add a little bit of transparency to their material. When we look at the code, this is what we see. We get our transparent five by five blocks. So along with setting up our board, one more thing we have to do is set up the ability to add fonts. So for that, when we are constructing the Wordle class, we're also going to want to set up the font and let's see what this function is doing. So let me uncomment this and you're going to see here that what we're doing is creating a true type font loader and we're loading the JetBrains mono extra bold font. So this is a font that I downloaded from JetBrains. And basically what we're saying here is we want to parse the font and ensure that every single block has a reference to this parsed font. So when we want to add a letter to this block, the block itself is aware of what font it needs to add. Cool. So now we set up our board and we also added the ability to add text to this game. So the next step is to actually implement that using the keyboard input. So the next step is to add a key down event listener. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to keep track of what the user is typing. When they press the key, we want to actually add the letter onto our board. Let's take a look at this add letter function inside of our Wordle class. So this takes in the event and forget all of this code for now, but just take a look at this one right over here. What we're doing is we're first making sure that it is a valid key. Then we're going to add that letter letter to the block. So remember when we passed in the font to the block, that is what we're going to use to add the letter. So inside of our block class, we have an add letter function. And what this is going to do is to construct the geometry using the parsed font. So the JetBrains font that we added, and I'm doing a little bit of positioning so that it is in the center of the block itself. So as I start typing, you're going to notice that the letters are on screen and also that 
any block that contains a letter is going to have a different opacity. Obviously, the next step is to ensure that we don't, you know, allow the user to just keep typing like that. They got to first specify a five letter word, and then they have to press enter so they can actually play the game. This is not a valid game state for Wordle. So let's add those checks into our app. Inside of our add letter function, we want to make sure that if the length of the current word is equal to five, that the user does not continue typing. So that's what this is doing right here. So the next thing is the ability to guess the word if they're pressing enter. First, let's make sure that the length of the current word is five. And if it is, let's go through the five blocks that exist at the current level and let's check each letter. So what is this check function doing? If the letter is actually correct, then it's going to change the color to green. This is the green color. Else, if the word just includes a letter, then it's going to change the color to yellow. As soon as the length is five, we're going to make sure that the user can't add any more letters. Then they have to press enter. And once they press enter, we're going to check the letters. And these letters, if they're correct, are either going to be marked yellow or green. The last thing we want to do is also allow the user to backspace. And what that's going to do is remove the letter. And removing the letter is pretty straightforward. We're going to call this remove function on the 3JS group, which is just going to remove the letter mesh. And we're going to set the opacity back to what it was before. So let me save that and save that and go here and refresh this page. So let me start typing something. Let's let me just type ASDF ASDF. I'm, I keep typing. You can hear that, right? But it's not allowing me to add more letters. Let's say that I typed it incorrectly. Now I can backspace. And let's say the word I wanted to actually type was jolly. Now I can press enter. And as you can see, if it is in the correct spot, it is going to be uh, green. And of course, if it is in the in incorrect spot, but it, it exists in the world, then it's going to be yellow. At this point, we've basically got our simple little Wordle app up and running. Now, the last thing to do is to add some animations because we are cool and cool people add animations. So what I want to do is make these uh, green blocks basically dance around. So I'm going to go over to my block class and inside the constructor, I'm going to set this animation state. It's first going to be set to false. And when we want the animation to run, we want it to run when the check letter function turns the block green. So if it's green, we know that that is a block that we want to animate. What is this animation function going to do? So basically, this is a function that runs every single frame. If this block is set to animate, we want to update its Z rotation. And how do we want to update the Z rotation? We want to use a sign function. So it basically swivels back and forth. So let's take a look at what's going to happen. So let's type in boards. There you go. If it is green and it is in the right spot, then it's going to start dancing. And yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hopefully now you guys have a little bit of understanding of how to create a Wordle game in 3D. Anyway, uh, I'm going to leave you guys off with a quick little demo. Be sure to leave a like and I'll catch you guys next time.